Well, dignitaries and others from around the world will be on hand tomorrow morning as mourners gather to remember Mother Angelica at her funeral mass. Joining us now is Father Mitch Pacwa to talk about tomorrow's services and how we will honor Mother Angelica. Mm -hmm. Let's talk first because you knew her very well, mm -hmm. Father yes. Pacwa. What were her last days like? Very, very difficult. On uh, Good Friday, she began to experience tremendously sharp pain. Her, her screams of pain could be heard down the hall. Um, she's been bedridden for now for about 12 years. And due to old age and no calcium de deficiency, apparently yeah. her bones broke. Yeah. Uh, and she was in excruciating pain. They, especially from, uh, uh, amazingly, from nine, and then at about three o'clock on Good Friday, it eased up. Then on Easter Sunday, she also experienced another bout of pain, not quite as intense. Uh, they did their best to give, you know, the painkillers they could, but she, you know, uh, there, there are limits. And she, I understand she told the nuns that she wanted to be, keep her alive as long as possible. Right. What was that she, for? Well, for one thing, um, she doesn't want them to take their life, her life, um, that'd be murder. So they, you know, to help her to, to live. And, you know, Catholic doctrine doesn't allow us to do any form of euthanasia at all. So uh, she was always committed to that. But she also had a strong sense that, you know, like, like in the first letter of St. Peter, chapter uh, 2 and 3, that there's a union with Christ in suffering and that that union is a way to offer yourself to him, but also to pray for people who have other forms of pain and are suffering worse pain. Yeah. Uh, she, she often would, uh, she suffered through her whole life. She did. Uh, from childhood, or, or she and her mom were abandoned by her dad. Um, that right, right before the depression, during the depression, it got worse. Um, you know, she, she suffered a lot of sickness, uh, a serious accident when she was a nun, young nun, that she had to have a brace from her neck to her ankles. Um, it's gone through a lot. Gone through a lot. Take us through the service tomorrow, the, the funeral mass. Right. What's expected, sir? Uh, we'll have the mass tomorrow at 1030. And what we'll be, do is a process into the, the church up in Hansville. And we'll have, we'll celebrate mass as normal. Um, but with the certain rites that are, are appropriate to her funeral, for instance, the uh, a few things like incensing uh, that would be not always common in other masses. And then after the mass, uh, a number of us priests will lead her body out of the church. There's a large piazza out in front where folks who can't get in will be, um, and we'll take it around and then go down to a chapel underneath there's a, there's a lower chapel. She will be interred there. We'll take her in there, uh, get that done. And then afterwards, people will be able to go down to that chapel in the afternoon. She's a beloved icon. How does this affect you personally? You've known her for a long time. About yeah, seconds, it, it's, yeah, we miss her a lot. But there's also a joy. She went out on Easter Sunday. And, you know, she was somebody who was so close to the Lord. We have a strong sense of a moral confidence that she's with our Lord. Yeah. And she loved Jesus above everything else in life. And I'm sure he's welcoming her. Well, Father Pacwa, I understand you've known her for 32 years. 32 years. We certainly appreciate you coming in and speaking with us. Thank about you. Mother Angelica, tomorrow's going to be a very special day as the world remembers Mother Angelica. Jamie.